Good morning. We're going to get started. So um, I'm Bonnie Bello from EPA, and I'd like to start by introducing our regional administrator, Judith Ank. Judith, come on up. Good morning, everyone. I'm Judith Ank uh, with the EPA. It's a wonderful day to be on the Gowanus Canal, and I'm here to announce that EPA uh, has a final plan to clean up the Gowanus Canal. I am so grateful to be here with Congress Member Nydia Velasquez, uh, City Council Member Brad Lander, Assemblywoman Joan Millman, Borough President Marty Markowitz, and the Department of Environmental Conservation Regional Director Venetia Lannan. Let me give you a, a short synopsis of what the EPA cleanup plan will do. If you take a look at the canal, you will see, unfortunately, a, a rainbow sheen on top of the canal today, which is significant of some petroleum products on the canal. Thankfully, it didn't rain recently, so we're not smelling the canal today. Uh, but what this cleanup plan will do is require the removal of 600,000 cubic yards of contaminated sediment from the bottom of the canal. This plan today also reduces sewage overflows from combined sewer overflows by 58% to 74% so that the canal stays clean after the dredging. In some areas contaminated with liquid coal tar that bubbles up to the surface, the sediment will be stabilized by mixing it with cement or a similar binding material. The Guanas Canal is only 1.8 miles long. It's only 100 feet wide, but it is one of the most contaminated urban waterways in the entire nation. We believe that this cleanup will take between 8 to 10 years. It will cost $506 million. Uh, the companies that will primarily be paying for the cleanup are parties we call potentially responsible parties. That's National Grid, the City of New York, four federal agencies, and 29 companies. And we look forward to working collaboratively with them to get this cleanup started. We also believe that this cleanup will create hundreds of new jobs. And we want as many of these jobs to be local jobs as possible. This um, contamination took about 100 years to create. Uh, we have a toxic legacy here of heavy metals such as lead and mercury, PCBs, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, and an array of toxins which we believe threaten people's health and the environment. Just to put this a little bit in context, at other Superfund sites where EPA does work all over the region, we typically measure toxics in parts per million, parts per billion, sometimes in parts per trillion. Here we measure the toxins in parts per hundred. For the Hudson River, for instance, where we do a lot of work getting PCBs out of the river, PCBs in the sediment we're dredging are at about 80 parts per million. In the Gowanus Canal, EPA is measuring toxic substances in coal tar in parts per hundred. I want to emphasize that we developed this cleanup plan in cooperation with the community. The Gowanus Canal Superfund site has one of the most engaged and active communities of any cleanup site in the nation. I want to thank the dozens of local citizens and business leaders who are part of the community advisory group. I want to thank them for the cool little um, button that they put out today. Um, and I really um, want to emphasize that this was done with a lot of community input. In January, we held two public meetings. We've been meeting with the community regularly. We received over 1,800 public comments, most of, it, most of the comments encouraging us to do a robust, thorough cleanup. The proposed plan also included the possibility of building a disposal facility in Red Hook. Today, I'm announcing that we will not do that. Instead, uh, the EPA has decided to require disposal of the least contaminated sediment at a facility away from this area. It's certainly an option that we had to take a hard look at. We took a hard look and decided not to go in that direction. 
So most of the sediment will be sent outside of the area. The second big piece of this cleanup is keeping sewage from recontaminating the canal. And it's not just sewage that comes out of the CSOs, it's also toxins. Uh, the canal receives pollution from a sewer system that combines sewage, street runoff, and wastewater. When it rains, the combined sewer system often overflows, sending a wave of raw sewage and toxic materials into the canal. This overflow deposits a new layer of toxic material in the canal. This cleanup plan that EPA is announcing today will require that discharges from two of the major sewage overflow points in the upper canal be outfitted with retention tanks so that when it rains heavily, the tanks will hold the water so we don't have this rush of raw sewage and toxins going into the canal whenever it rains. And as you know, it rains a lot. We are happy that um, the city of New York has also committed uh, to building green infrastructure, which is a more passive way to keep water, stormwater, out of the canal, and we applaud that. But the plan we're re announcing today will reduce sewage solid discharges by 50H of 74%, and this cleanup plan will end that cycle of contamination and recontamination. As you know, the canal has been heavily polluted since it was dug shortly after the Civil War. More than 100 years of development and industrialization has put a toxic stamp on the Gowanus Canal. Now, we have a chance to put our stamp on the canal. Our parents, many who grew up in Brooklyn, like mine, have only known a polluted Gowanus Canal. Our children and our grandchildren will now only know a clean one. And today is the day the legacy of the Gowanus Canal has changed course. I want to thank everyone who's helped us get to this point today, uh, particularly Congresswoman Velasquez. Without her strong early support, we never would have gotten this done. I want to thank the Gowanus Canal Community Advisory Group and I really want to thank my EPA colleagues who have worked tirelessly on this. This seems to be a week when federal employees are not that valued, but I want to tell you that my EPA colleagues worked above and beyond the call of duty to get this work done. And I really want to point out um, four of my colleagues and hold your applause to the end and clap loud. I want to acknowledge the work of Walter Mugden, Natalie Loney, Brian Carr, and Christos Siemus. Well-deserved applause. Um, I'll now turn it back over to Bonnie Bello. And um, at the end, when everyone speaks, we'll take questions. Thank you. So now, without further ado, um, let's bring up Congresswoman Nydia Velasquez, who comes to us from a hard, hard job in Washington. Good morning. What a beautiful, shiny day here in Brooklyn. And uh, it's just so sweet to be home, especially coming back from Washington, D.C. last night. I have to rush out and go back to the theater, theater uh, theatrical uh, scene that we are uh, that is being played out in Washington DC it just really sa it saddens me uh, it could compromise projects like this one uh, but I'm declaring all the EPA regional staff essential today <laughs> so <laughs> thank you all for being here today is an important day for the Gowanus community for Brooklyn and for our city as a whole. I would like to especially recognize the work of EPA Regional Administrator Judith Enk, Superfund Director Walter Mugden, Gowanus Project Manager Christos Siamis, and Natalie Loney, EPA Community Involvement Coordinator. I also want to thank uh, all the elected officials, uh, Brooklyn Borough President Mary Markowitz, co uh, Assemblywoman John Millman uh, and Councilman Brad Lander, I believe that he's here. Uh, Councilman elect Carlos Manchaca from Sunset Park. 
and of course, the community. You played an important, important role. Thank you all for the great input, for your questions, your concerns, your feedback. You made this happen. You are the reason why we are here today. Since the beginning, since the beginning of this process, one of our top priorities has been ensuring community involvement and input. The goal of Superfund is to clean the canal, the water, and the sediments for the benefit of our neighborhoods. Removing these hazards and transforming the waterway into a source of local pride will protect the public health and make this area more livable. But it is important to remember that at the end of the day, we are here on behalf of our community. I must say that the EPA team, under the leadership of Judith Eng, kept this in mind throughout the process. In that regard, the views of local residents have been critical. That is why the inclusive process implemented by EPA has yielded a better strategy that reflects the community input. Going forward, we must continue working to ensure the public is familiar and comfortable with how the canal is remediated. We now have a comprehensive cleanup plan that will benefit our community and ensure polluters pay for remediation. This plan includes removing contaminated sediment and capping dredge areas. As the regional administrator just stated, it's going to ca cost over $506 million. It is important to remember the primary responsible parties are the ones paying for the cleanup. The polluters, be it the U.S. Navy or private companies, will be ones shouldering the cost, and that is fair. It is also worth noting that contaminated sediments will be shipped out of New York to be disposed of properly away from our community. The Gowanus Canal is full of PCBs, PHHs, and metals, including mercury, lead, and copper. Removing this will take years, but it will be cleaner and safer. In addition, this process offers the opportunity for cleanup jobs. I have spoken with EPA about doing a super fun job training institute, as they have done in Passaic River in New Jersey. Of course, once the Gowanus is cleaned and properly maintained, there will be options for its continued redevelopment. While this process has taken time, it has been inclusive. We are cleaning up Gowanus the right way, in a manner respectful of community needs. Listing the canal as a super fun site is what made this possible. It wasn't popular with everyone at the time, but I think this process has shown it was indeed the right decision. So I would like to thank EPA and the community for the work today. We have a long way to go, but today marks an important milestone. I am proud of how far we have come together. Thank you and God bless you. And now we're going to hear from uh, State Assemblywoman Joan Millman. Thank you. Yes, stand here. Yes, sure. Good morning. I was just welcoming my colleague from the State Senate, Senator Velman at Montgomery, who just joined us. You, you know, this is not a case of a one-time one environmental uh, disaster. This has been going on for over a century. The Gowanus Canal has been home to hundreds of businesses. 
And over that time, many of these businesses have used the Gowanus Canal as a dumping ground, transforming our canal into a polluted waterway. And many of these businesses are not even in existence anymore, while many others continue to pollute the canal. So no one business or no one catastrophic event is responsible for the state of affairs. And as the water quality deteriorated, the demand for a plan to clean up the canal only increased. And many measures were implemented, including a flushing tunnel, dredging the canal, but none of these measures cleans the canal of more of a century of environmental abuse. So I'm very proud today to stand here with Congresswoman Velasquez and Environmental Protection Agency Region 2, right? Not one and not three, but we're two, all right, Judith Inc., and all the other elected officials that I've worked with, including our new uh, city councilman-elect, Carlos Menchaca, who's going to be a partner in all of this. And I want to say that if I don't have a chemistry background, so when I, they started to talk to me about all the environmental hazards, if it weren't for the EPA team, I still would not quite understand what was going on in the bottom of the canal. Because even if they could clean the surface, it was what's hidden in the mud that really presents an environmental disaster for us, our children, and our grandchildren. So today, the record that we're going to see, the record of decision, is a culmination of four years of hard work by the EPA and all of the volunteer Community Canal, Gowanus Canal Advisory Group. And I was told that the over 1,800 submissions by residents of our communities was the most that the EPA had ever gotten. So you let it out there, we're going to respond. We're going to tell you in this community what we think about what you're doing, how you're doing it, how long it's taking, and how you could make it even better. So thanks to all of you, we're going to have the best cleanup possible. There's still a lot of work to be done, though, and construction to endure. But thankfully, hopefully less than a decade from now, we will have a clean canal that will not be a mark of blight on our neighborhood. And as always, myself and other elected officials are going to remain totally engaged in the cleanup process. Our work is far from finished, but finally we are closer to having a clean canal that will no longer bear the title of Lavender Lake. Thank you. And now I'd like to welcome State Senator Velmanette Montgomery. Come on up. Good afternoon, I think it is. Good morning. Um, I want to just, uh, when I was first elected, I, one of the activists, we called him at that time the mayor of uh, Gowanus, Buddy Scotto, insisted that I take a trip uh, around the canal. And he was working furiously for many, many years uh, around cleaning it up. And every year, every time I come to Gowanus, the canal has been central to the issue uh, for people who live here, as well as every time it rains, it becomes a huge problem. And so when the EPA announced that uh, they were looking at uh, having this body of water be part of their study uh, to announce it as a Superfund site, uh, I was very, very happy, and I, I'm happy to say that I attended one of the most exciting uh, meetings that I had ever attended in this part of my district, where people had come out to voice their opinion, and it was loud and clear to me that the community wanted this cleanup to happen. And so I supported it. I still do. I'm happy to that we did, all of us as elected officials, uh, decided unanimously with the community that we wanted this super fund, this to be a super fund site. So I'm happy that the EPA has, has uh, brought us this far and I'm looking forward to uh, this canal being pristine at some point. 
at least enough that we don't get the smells anymore, we don't have the color that it is anymore, uh, and certainly that we have development on the canal that people can enjoy, appreciate, uh, and even some housing possibly, uh, which is part of the plan for the future of this canal. So thanks to the EPA, thanks to my colleagues, thank you, uh, Borough President, uh, for sort of leading the charge on this as well. And uh, welcome, uh, Council Member Mancheca. Um, you, you have a lot of work ahead of you. So, but, <laughs> but we, 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 we hold hands over here and we do things together, so that makes it much easier. So thanks to the community for your support. And next up, we have Brooklyn Borough President Margowitz. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Bonnie, very, very much. And uh, what a way to start a week. I only wish uh, the teapot Senator Cruz was here uh, to, to understand that government has a vital role in the lives of Americans. And in this case, Brooklynites, whether it's health care for all of us or whether it's the cleanup of the Gowanus, government has a vital role. And when directed in the right way, plays a significant role in improving all of our lives, and that's true. I wish she was here. Uh, let me, if I may, uh, I might add, Judy, and I know your family was from Brooklyn, but in your case, once a Brooklynite, always a Brooklynite. Uh, and one thing you know, of course, you heard mostly, more than any place in the country, you heard from residents of the community. Doesn't surprise me, doesn't, because in Brooklyn, 2.6 million residents, and take it from me, 12 years as borough president, 2.6 million bosses. There's no such thing as being quiet or introverted in this borough, that is for sure. What they want to share with you, they share big time. Anyway, my colleagues, uh, Nidia Velasquez. Nidia, I gotta tell you, the reason, no matter who tried to put up someone against you, it was such a losing proposition. And the reason why, you get the job done. You're exactly the kind of elected official that anywhere in America would be proud to have, and I mean that. And it's a pleasure all these years working alongside and under your leadership. Uh, Joan Millman, of course, a pleasure very much. Millman at Montgomery, we go back many years, many years. The State Senate, uh, Brad Lander, tremendous. And Carlos Menchaca, many of you may not know him. I do. He worked for me and left me, uh, so I know him. I didn't want him to leave. He, he resigned. He came with droopy eyes. I know when they come with droopy eyes, they want to leave, and he moved on, and uh, I know you're going to be an excellent city council member. I know that. Excellent. Excellent. So, Nidia, thank you for your great uh, leadership on this, and uh, uh, all of the stakeholders here, uh, Gowanus Community Advisory Group, the cleanup effort, has brought together stakeholders from every walk of life, Gowanus, Park Slope, Cobble Hill, Boulder Mill, Carroll Gardens, Red Hook, our community board six uh, and seven, Craig Hammerman is here, I salute you, and the members of our community board, I see Jerry Armour here, uh, from Chambers of Commerce, Conservancies, Tenant Associations, Buddy Scotto, who to me, uh, I proudly share the title of Mr. Brooklyn, uh, Lizzie Olesker, thank you for all your leadership. Here's the bottom line. We can begin to look forward uh, toward the future. In due time, the Gowanus Canal will be a safer and cleaner place for folks all of us and wildlife alike. Its remediation will one day turn the canal into an economic engine for our borough and an urban o oasis of, of relaxation for Brooklynites. A dream of a future when we see families line up to take a boat ride uh, in Brooklyn's very own Venice. And that's true, it's possible, you gotta think it's true. Several local residents dreamed up the Gwandola a couple of years ago, and I say, why not? So first things first, the hard work is next to dredge and stabilize the canal, but with Judy and your great team here, EPA and officials like Nydia at the helm and outstanding community leaders that are right here, I believe the best days of the Gowanus Canal are just upstream. Thank you all. What a great, great way to start the week. And now we're going to hear from a representative of the community. Um, Lizzie Olesker will... Um, speak to you representing the community advisory group for the Gowanus Cleanup Project. I want to invite the other members of the CAG to come up with me right now, please. Stand with me. 
that's it. No, there's some more. Here they come. Great. You gotta get in front of me because I'll pass. The Gowanus Canal is the first EPA Superfund site in Brooklyn. Making the announcement of this record of decision, or ROD, an historic event for the 2.5 million people of our borough. The much needed cleanup of the Gowanus Canal is long awaited. And this record of decision comes as a firm commitment to the people of Brooklyn that the contaminates of the Gowanus Canal will be removed from our dense urban environment. The Gowanus Canal Community Advisory Group, or CAG, looks forward to a detailed review of the ROD and providing ongoing input to those elements that will impact the community moving forward. Formed in 2010, the mission of the Gowanus Canal CAG is to be a forum for dialogue between representatives of all segments of the community about the federal Superfund cleanup of the Gowanus Canal and other related issues of concern to the community. This EPA record of decision, or ROD, is the outcome of more than three years of extensive meetings and discussions with the community and the Gowanus Canal CAG. The Gowanus Canal CAG is by far the largest and most diverse community group ever formed to work with the EPA on a Superfund site. The CAG having arrived at a number of consensus resolutions on the canal cleanup is grateful for the opportunity and role it has had in the process leading up to the announcement of the record of decision. The CAG provided consensus resolutions to EPA supporting the overall scope and approach of the proposed plan while stressing a focus on ecological restoration and honoring the historical character of the canal. The CAG appreciates the EPA's attentiveness to schedules and time frames in reaching this rod. We understand that the CAG as a community engagement tool will take on new roles as this process unfolds. The Kiwanis CAG looks forward to con continuing a robust exchange with the EPA as design plans for implementing the cleanup that is specified in the ROD moves forward in a timely manner. The CAG is committed to disseminating information about the Gowanus Canal and engaging all area stakeholders in ensuring the community issues are heard and articulated to EPA and other agencies. Finally, information and a calendar of meetings for the Gowanus Canal CAG can be found at gowanuscag.org. The ROD will be discussed in detail at the next full meeting of the CAG on October 22nd, 2013. On behalf of my fellow CAG members, I want to thank you for this historic day. So as soon as we're going to um, move to questions and answers right now and bring our speakers up to answer your questions, as soon as we're done, we will gather everybody for photos, um, which you can do immediately after. And I would just ask one thing. If you have questions that are unrelated to the Gowanus cleanup, could you hold those to the end or we could take them separately and individually? So please come on up. <laughs> and any questions from reporters? Sir? Uh, how clean is it going to be? Is it going to be clean enough to fish, clean enough to swim? Um, no. Um, it'll be much cleaner than it is today. You'll be able to safely boat and be able to touch the water. 
but it's going to take decades to get this water body to the point where it would be safe to, to swim or eat fish. So no swimming anytime soon, um, but this is the, the key first step to get us there. And I just want to quickly introduce Council Member Brad Lander, who is a little tardy, but who has played a really pivotal role in getting this cleanup to happen. So let me just give the microphone to the Council Member Brad Lander. Brief. Thank you. I'll be very brief. I know you've already heard so much here, but I just want to add my voice of thanks and enthusiasm and just real optimism about what is possible. Uh, and on this day of all days with uh, uh, wackos, there's nothing else to call them, I'm sorry, with uh, wackos in Washington to be standing here with our representatives of the federal government. Uh, excuse me, no, no, well, the ones that are shutting down the government are not our extraordinary congresswoman, believe me. All right. Um, but to be standing here with representatives of the federal government helping have partnered with our community done the research, uh, built, done community outreach in a way we've rarely seen, worked with our elected officials from Congresswoman Velasquez and our borough president and our state and city elected officials. Um, it's extraordinary. And uh, this is something I think many people thought would not happen or thought would involve enormous conflict in our community. Uh, and for them to have brought us to this point uh, to the brink of a real cleanup of the Gowanus Canal, uh, thanks to the thoughtful and dedicated and consistent effort, starting uh, with EPA and, and uh, its administrator and its Region 2 administrator and, and Walter. It's just a big honor, and I'm so happy to be here. we got a lot of work to do in the years to come, but I couldn't be more enthusiastic and optimistic today about the future of the canal. And I want to say a big thank you uh, to the EPA, to all my partners in government, to all our partners in the community, and to everyone involved. Thank you. Thank you, council member. And um, the council member's role has really been pivotal over the last few years. Other questions? Um, your plan includes the retention tank for the final plan of the Bloomberg administration has said that it does not believe it does pass to build these tanks. So how will the EGA ensure that these tanks are going to get built? Well, it is included in the record of decision. Um, and we we will work closely with the, with the city government. Um, the question is, um, the Bloomberg administration does not agree that retention tanks are necessary to control the CSO pollution. And I was um, very eloquently responding that um, we, th we think the tanks are essential, um, especially during wet weather events, heavy rains. And um, this is folded into the record of decision. Uh, so we hope to reach uh, an amicable agreement with the city. I think this is an opportunity for the city to turn the page, uh, to roll up their sleeves and work collaboratively, not only with EPA, but also the state and the other potential responsible parties to get this job done. The reason why we uh, included this in this record of decision is because it doesn't make sense to dredge the contaminated sediment and then have recontamination. Do you want to add something? I, I just would like to, she's nice. She's really nice. <laughs> but let me remind the city that the EPA under the law, the statute, has the power and authority to compel the city. It, it has been part of the record of decision. Uh, and, and maybe I'll just add as a, as a city elected official, though on the legislative side of the House and not the executive side of the House, um, this is an important moment of transition in the city as well. A lot of things are going to change at City Hall. And I hope we can rise to that opportunity because, as the congresswoman made clear, the power exists. But it would be much better sure. if we, in the next administration, can work together to achieve a real good comprehensive agreement uh, that builds on the work that's done here, that includes those tanks, that makes sure we improve water quality, that's thoughtful as part of the city's long-term control plan for continued reductions in CSOs. Uh, and moves forward in, you know, post Sandy to invest in the infrastructure that we need. So uh, we're going to be partners, uh, the city and the EPA, in doing this, whatever it takes. Susan, when you ask your question, could you please state the name, your name, and the news organization you're with? Hi, I'm Leslie Ulbrich from the and so What about the other responsible parties like National Grid? Are there agreements in place with them? We, we work with all of the PRPs, and it's primarily National Grid. 
uh, what about other responsible parties um, other than the City of New York? So the major potential responsible parties are National Grid, the City of New York, four federal agencies, and 29 different companies. And they're all listed on the EPA web page. And what typically happens with Superfund cleanups is we meet with all of the parties and we apportion liability. Um, sadly, we have done this many, many times. Uh, and, we, and they often meet themselves and figure out who's going to pay what. EPA's concern is to make sure we have enough money to thoroughly do this cleanup. And if there's not an agreement to do it, we have legal tools, as the Congresswoman mentioned, that would compel the various parties to come up with the money. We do not want uh, federal taxpayers footing the bill. Um, this is a key part of the Superfund law, the polluter pay principle, and um, we think we can get this done. Certainly the sooner that the parties cooperate with us, the quicker this is going to go. Uh, we, you know, eight to ten years is our estimate on the cleanup. If we get a higher level of cooperation from all of the parties, we can do it sooner. Hi, and sorry, my name is Joseph Alexiu, and um, I'm writing a book on the history of the Gowanus, which will be published by NYU Press sometime next year. Um, I, my question about the retention tanks, you said you were going to put two retention tanks at the head of the canal, is that right? And that would reduce SOs to, what, what was it? 58% to 74%. 74%. Why not 100%? I'll let Walter take that one. Hi. <laughs> So I'm Walter Mugden, I'm the Superfund Director for Region 2. The question was, uh, and just in case you didn't know where I work, I got it up here. Um, so in calculating what uh, kind of a reduction we needed, we had to uh, figure out what was necessary, and we are only going to call for that which is necessary to, to support the uh, permanent cleanup of this uh, canal sediment. Uh, we believe that the 58 to 74 percent range that we've identified will do that. That'll be sufficient. Uh, the actual specific percentage of cleanup that will eventually be accomplished will be selected through the design process. But it, the the difference in the size of tanks that would be necessary to go from let's say 74 percent to 100 percent is enormous, and uh, so there really is a, a point of diminishing returns there. Like 95 or 90, or you know, because this is still going to be raw sewage going into the canal, right? Correct. That's what I'm trying to We find. believe that that range that uh, Judith has identified is the correct range. Yes. Okay, so can I just say one thing? The first time that we ever identified CSOs going to the canal historically, 1856. 1856. I just want to say that number so we know that it's not a century, it's a century and a half or more. Thank you. It's good to have a historian. Um, looking at this. And, and on the CSO issue, I, I just want to emphasize another point. Because of climate change, we are seeing more intense rainstorms, more rain coming down during a shorter period of time. That's why President Obama announced his climate action plan three months ago. And last Friday, EPA announced the first ever national standards to reduce carbon emissions from power plants. This is all related. Intense rainfall means more sewage overwhelming antiquated sewer systems. And I can tell you, all of these elected officials and EPA worked really hard uh, in the aftermath of Sandy. We're coming up on the one, one year anniversary of Sandy. The canal went over its banks. And the, the way that happened, it was sort of a pulsating of the water. Thankfully, it wasn't a scouring, so we didn't get a lot of the toxins and the coal tar coming up. But when we did some limited testing, we did find pathogens and high levels of bacteria in people's um, basements. And because of this intense weather that local elected officials have to deal with over and over again, I think it illustrates more than ever why we have to reduce the CSO pollution. We don't want high pathogen levels in people's basements. No one should have to live like that. So the question was, uh, in making our decisions about the needs for the sewer improvements, how much uh, consideration was given to the, I guess, the city's plans for further development. So we do have to assume a reasonably anticipated future land use 
And in this case, uh, we've assumed that there would be a, a mix of commercial and residential, as well as the existing industrial operations down here at this end of the canal. We assume that that would be the case going forward. It doesn't really make a difference to our decision whether we would have a larger amount of residential or a smaller amount of residential development. We know that there'll be quite a bit of residential development. I'm sorry. Quite a bit of residential development in the along the canal, particularly in the upper canal. What I want to say here is that the EPA is giving the people of the city of New York and the city of New York the gift of the opportunity to think about what we want in the area around the canal. There is zoning in place today that would not allow a significant amount of residential development, some, but not a significant amount. And the questions about the future we want for the Gowanus belong to us. Uh, and we need to make them through an appropriate community planning, city planning, you know, defined process. That includes thinking about infrastructure investments. So the, the mayor's uh, strategic initiative for resiliency and rebuilding raises the question about and says we will study whether there should be floodgates. Uh, at the mouth of the canal and hopefully we'll be able to work with the Army Corps to look at that and we need to consider the long-term decisions together but it has been impossible to really consider those things without a real cleanup plan that is the starting point for anything uh, and to have a real cleanup plan that addresses the sediment and uh, significantly addresses CSOs was is absolutely the first step before we make collective decisions together about that future and we're really grateful for the opportunity to be able to do that in this context. Uh, let me take just a few minutes uh, to uh, summarize for the Spanish-speaking people that are here, an important part of the community, and they too are impacted uh, by uh, what we're doing today. Uh, lo que estamos haciendo hoy es con la Junta de, eh, de Environmental Protection, la Junta de Protección Ambiental de los Estados Unidos. Sorry, it's Washington. Uh, la Junta de Protección Ambiental. Esto ha sido un proceso que ha llevado muchos años y hemos querido que toda la contaminación y los sedimentos que están aquí, como ustedes ven, el este es una una eh, el agua huele mal, hay mucha contaminación y nuestro compromiso es presentar un plan comprensivo que limpie este canal, no de forma que podamos nadar en él pero de forma que nuestras familias puedan venir a disfrutarlo. Y en este proceso ustedes también tienen que participar. Una vez se implemente toda este, esta limpieza, van a haber una serie de workshops, de, de, de reuniones con la comunidad. Ustedes tienen que asistir a esas reuniones, porque esto también los va a impactar a ustedes. Y esperamos que sea de forma positiva.